Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, members of the committee. Uh, I'm happy to bring you Senate Bill 111. And I've handed out some uh, information for you there uh, to kind of do the framework. As if you've even watched the news over the last uh, weekend, you've noticed there's been a lot of discussion about remedial uh, education and how remedial education is impacting the state budget and also academic achievement of students throughout the state. So uh, if you get a chance to look at it, it just came out. It's about 47 pages, but uh, I have an analysis of kind of a summary that I'd like to just kind of set the framework for the discussion that we have, and it's, on, it's a single page sheet. Uh, out of the report, uh, students in Colorado who are 19 and under who are needing remediation as they go to college is 34,537 for those who have probably been out of school for a while and are coming back to school uh, to maybe retrain themselves, we would, they would be 20 years and older. There's 23,516, so current year that we just finished, 58,073 students in the state of Colorado uh, were taking remedial courses at the community college system. Uh, roughly 62% of them are passing those particular courses. Uh, the cost has gone up from uh, what we spend to support that in the state of Colorado from 13 million to 19 million this last year. You add in the tuition that is paid by the students to take the remedial courses, that's another 6.7 million. And then there's some cash funding courses equal almost to a million dollars. So the total is 26 point seven million dollars a year we are spending in Colorado to uh, do remediation and uh, you can look at the breakdown it's primarily a math issue 41 percent of the freshmen coming in need math remediation uh, 36 percent in writing and 27 percent and reading so uh, the situation is pretty uh, amazing what I what I've worked with and as you all know I'm the administrator of Carver Springs Early Colleges, and uh, that's where we give kids an opportunity to get an associate's degree while they're still in high school. And so we have functionally set up our curriculum at our school to be the remedial curriculum from 030, 060, 099. That is our college prep curriculum, and then we have uh, about 100, over 170 kids right now this semester attending courses. At Pikes Peak, we have about 120 attending college courses at the CTU campus. And so uh, we have spent a lot of time and effort trying to make sure that every one of our students graduate remediation free from high school and go on to college. And just to give you a little bit of analysis of what is possible, our graduating class last year of 108 students, we had 16 of those students graduate with over 60 semester hours of college credit. Nine of them were conferred associate degrees uh, Tony Kinkle, the president of uh, uh, Pikes Peak Community College, came and said it was the first time in the 52-year history of the Pikes Peak Community College he had ever conferred an associate's degree before they conferred a high school degree. And that was at our graduation. So the average student last year graduated with 45 semester hours of college credit. So it's possible, and in working with trying to, is there a way to scale this up to a statewide effort and say we can solve the remediation issues of the Colorado paradox in Colorado. And how could we do that? And I have a policy that is in front of you, one of the policies that we adopted in November at Carver Springs Early Colleges. And I just would like to take a moment and go over with you. It's IK, it's Carver Springs plans that every student can graduate according to our mission statement out of our school, and it says every student, regardless of background or skill, will achieve mastery and will demonstrate that they can, see, can succeed in high school and college in their career, no exceptions, no excuses. I think we are the first high school in the state of Colorado that I know of that has created a policy that says absolutely every one of our students, 100% of them, will graduate college ready from our school. And this policy reflects that commitment. It's based upon a cut score on the ACT test uh, of 18 in math, 17 in English, and 16 in reading, which is a score. So uh, we worked with uh, Jerry Anderson uh, to kind of see where that would be college ready so that they could go on to college. So 
I, th I think it's possible for us to do this, and I think it's possible for us to find a, a, a venue as such to uh, accomplish doing that at the K-12 system as opposed to forcing remediation to um, the college level. And so what I started out was to mirror a bill that would actually mirror the policy of Colorado Springs or the colleges statewide, uh, realizing the uh, thrust of what's happening to the budget in yesterday's hearing, that we're going to cut about $500 per pupil. I worked on that last night. Our school is going to take about a $300,000 hit. Uh, I just started thinking, is there a way that we can do best practices and focus on how to help maybe the school systems across the state of Colorado come up with solutions without mandating a solution in light of what's going on with the budget. And so this is the third iteration of the bill, which is basically a task force to collaborate with uh, the commission that's going on with the governor's office, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically, if you would like, if you take the bill and look on page eight of the bill, it talks about what we wanted to try and accomplish with uh, demonstrating and ensuring that uh, students can graduate with uh, and be post-secondary workforce ready no later than their high school graduation so that they do not need to be spending money on remedial coursework. And I, I think you've heard the statistic, but I, I will just mention it to you. In December of this year, last year, for the first time in the history of the United States of America, college debt exceeded credit card debt. And so what is happening, because we are having so many students having to borrow money as prices go up with tuition, we are finding so many kids are going to be burdened with debt, and if they have to not only pay for a four-year college education, but they have to pay for a five-year or a six-year to get that because of the remediation issues, it makes it very uh, difficult for them to go forward. Uh, the second uh, portion of the task force study would be to provide uh, intervention education services uh, all the way from the elementary system through the secondary system so that we can look at where is it critical for students to be at grade level in reading and math so that we can hopefully make sure that they are making sufficient progress as they go through. And then in Texas they have started doing a lot of diagnostic modular instructional courses that are uh, able to fill in the gaps with students so that they don't have to spend a whole semester doing a remedial course. And then looking at the ICAP and making sure that the kids are on target as they go through the system starting with seventh grade on up to make sure that they're on target to uh, be successful. And then finally, uh, eliminate the process of social promotion where we just promote kids without making sure that they are academically ready for the rigor that needs to be done uh, in the classes. So, uh, that is the essence of the bill. I